i5-750. It is the first i5 processor that Intel has made. It has 4 cores and 4 threads that boost up to 3.2 GHz. Back in 2009, Intel released many other processors in various price ranges, which included the first gen i3s and i7s, but a lot of people decided to go with the i5s since they were both affordable and capable at the same time. Nowadays, 4 cores and 4 threads is barely considered enough to have a decent gaming experience, but today I'm here to figure it all out. To make sure that we don't run into any limitations, I'll be using 16GB of RAM, which is the limit of the CPU, and an RTX 4060 Ti to avoid any bottlenecks that could be caused by the GPU. Let's begin with Minecraft. We're running this game on the highest settings at 1080p resolution with chunk distance set to 12. Now even though this game is extremely easy to run, the micro stutters were still there and they were quite noticeable, especially when we were running or looking around. Lowering the graphics didn't really do a whole lot since the main issue here was the CPU. But besides those micro stutters, the gaming experience itself was actually not too bad. On average, we achieved 133 FPS. League of Legends Now since this game is extremely easy to run, I just maxed everything out and as expected, it ran perfectly well. On the highest settings at 1080p resolution, we averaged a solid 100 FPS. Valorant Here I had a similar experience as in Minecraft. We got hundreds of FPS with many micro starters. But unlike Minecraft, the micro starters were a big issue in this game. Valorant is an FPS game that requires fast reactions and a smooth frame rate. After playing the deathmatch for a few minutes, it became really apparent that the game wasn't running as smooth as I wanted it to. Because of these small but frequent micro starters, it was extremely difficult to focus and aim at the enemy players. On average, we achieved 130 FPS on high settings at 1080p resolution. GTA 5 After seeing how much this CPU struggled with the last few games, I decided to set the lowest settings here and hope for the best. After driving around for about 10 or so minutes, I barely ever saw more than one or two micro starters. On average, we achieved 75 FPS. In areas with many cars and NPCs, the FPS still managed to stay above 60, which was impressive and sometimes it even went as high as 100. Doom Eternal Here I went with the medium preset at 1080p resolution and as expected, the game ran without an issue whatsoever. Maybe I should start benching this game first because of how consistent it is. No matter what I'm testing and how weak it is, Doom Eternal always delivers a smooth gaming experience on any hardware. On average, we achieved 110 FPS. Forza Horizon 5 In this game, I chose the low preset since anything higher would be a bit too much for the CPU. I ran the built-in benchmark a few times and even though there were a few starters here and there, the overall experience wasn't too bad. Once everything got loaded, the gameplay became a lot smoother. On average, we got around 56 FPS. Counter-Strike 2 This game likes modern hardware a lot, which is why I set the lowest possible settings here from the get-go. And I gotta say, I was hoping for a bit more. I even tried lowering the resolution, but it didn't really do anything at all because the bottleneck here was the CPU. The gaming experience was actually so bad that it was impossible to play. The delay was unbearable and it was really difficult to aim. Hogwarts Legacy Now this game has a much higher requirements than CS2, but the main reason why it runs so much smoother than many other highly demanding games is that it loads the shaders beforehand. So once you enter the world, there's barely anything left for your CPU to do. On the lowest settings, at 1080p resolution, we achieved an impressive 38 FPS on average. Believe it or not, but the game was actually pretty playable. 30 plus FPS in a modern game on a 15 year old mid-range CPU is really impressive. Cyberpunk is another modern but demanding game that we'll be testing today. 
we are running it on the lowest settings at 1080p resolution without any sort of upscaling or frame generation. And I gotta say, it is kinda playable. Now of course we're not gonna have a stable 60 plus FPS on this kind of CPU, but all things considered, 30 FPS isn't all that bad. I was honestly expecting it to be much worse. Overall, what can I say? It's a 15 year old CPU and it shouldn't come as a surprise that we cannot run most modern games at 60 plus FPS. 5 years ago it was kinda acceptable, but now I think it's time to say goodbye. i5-750 was honestly a really good CPU when it was relevant. But tell me what you think, were you expecting this kind of results from it? And are you by any chance still gaming on an old CPU? On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.